Rethinking Heroes with Carrie Harrison. With over 700 military veteran journalists worldwide, it's your Rethinking Heroes Flash Briefing. Stories from the front. Carrie Harrison with your Rethinking Heroes Flash Briefing, an update on national defense news and stories affecting service members, veterans, and the rest of us. Following a rare court martial of a general officer, the Air Force will retire a two star general convicted of sexual contact. Well, not sexual contact as a colonel. That part, being a colonel, is not considered sexual contact, unless, of course, it's the pillaging at the end of the war, but just for having contact while being a colonel. This is William Cooley, commander of the Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, when he was found guilty of forcibly kissing his sister-in-law. Over a five-day trial in April of 2022, prosecutors showed that Cooley assaulted the woman as she gave him a ride to his parents' house after a family barbecue. A military judge sentenced Cooley to a reprimand and fined him some 55 grand. Commander Cooley's trial was the first in the Air Force for a general officer, and he is now the highest ranking officer to be convicted of sexual misconduct. The decision to retire Cooley as a colonel fell to Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall, and it's going to cost the 57-year-old tens of thousands of dollars in retirement pay and benefits over the rest of his life. Over in the Army, the service renamed its largest post as part of a continuing effort to remove all names that pay homage to Confederate generals. For more on that, we go to Rethinking Heroes' Rose Thayer. Thank you, Carrie. From Austin, Texas, this is Rose Thayer reporting for Rethinking Heroes. Three years ago, Congress mandated that the military remove all honors to Confederate war generals from its bases and property. Most notably, nine Army posts needed to be renamed. The Army recently held a ceremony to rename its largest installation, Fort Bragg, in North Carolina. It is now known as Fort Liberty. While the other eight bases received names to honor veterans known for exceptional service, Fort Liberty did not. Town hall, a town hall to discuss the name change. Uh, during that town hall, a Gold Star mother told leaders that her son died for liberty and the name stuck. Proponents of the name changes say the multi-million dollar effort will make the military more welcoming to black service members during a time when every branch in the military is struggling to make its recruiting goals. At another base that has now changed its name uh, from Fort Benning in Georgia to Fort Moore, the Army Ranger community is up in arms over a decision to remove multiple names linked to the Confederacy from the former Fort Benning Ranger Memorial. A military report found there are four men on the, memori on the memorial who fought for the Confederate Army and should therefore be removed. Stars and Stripes reported that the foundation that su supports the memorial is deeply troubled about removing three of those four names. One of the three men, John S. Mosby, earned the nickname the Gray Ghost because of his daring raids on Northern forces. However, after the war, he reconciled with the U.S., the North, and went on to become an assistant attorney general under President Ulysses S. Grant. Carrie, it's just one example of the complications that come with rebranding this painful chapter in American history. Yes, Rose. Well, now let's turn to the Army's continued efforts to increase the number of young people who are eligible to serve. Last year, the Army began offering prep courses to help people who want to join but may not be in the best shape or have the right knowledge or maybe any knowledge, turns out. Hopeful candidates could sign up for a training program to either help them improve their academic test scores or improve their physical fitness. Once students meet the Army's standards, they can then move straight on to boot camp. Now the Army is offering a program that allows people to work on both their education and their physical fitness at the same time. Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston said this is a positive step in expanding access to the Army to more people, or you could say handling two deal-breaking problems in one move to increase successful enrollment. The Pentagon says that fewer than 25% of people between the ages of 17 and 24 can meet the academic and physical requirements to serve in the military. Obesity is one of the biggest challenges, with one in five people under 24 being obese, which is often accompanied by chronic disease. Roughly 8,500 people have attended the Army's prep courses. From that, about 6,000 have moved on to attend basic training. Of course, all of this is to boost recruitment, which during the time of increasing international conflict has been lagging for more than a year. Rose Thayer, you have a new update about the military's decision on where to house 
Space Command. Yes, I do, Carrie. And before we start, I want to clarify that I'm not talking about Space Force, which is the military service branch created under President Donald Trump. This is <laughs> this is right. Space Space Command, which is a yes. joint military headquarters that works with US allies and partners on security issues in space. This means they protect assets such as satellites that provide weather updates and global communication. So before Trump created the Space Force, he reorganized Space Command and began a process to choose what state it would operate in. In his final days in office, he announced the command would go to Alabama. Colorado, where Space Command has temporarily set up shop, fought back. Senators from the state have repeatedly asked the Defense Department and Joe Biden to reconsider. Well, now Ohio is trying to get back in the game. Politicians from the Buckeye State wrote a letter to President Biden saying, Pick me. They they pointed to a number of space related resources that already exist in the state. And frankly, Colorado and Alabama can make the same arguments at stake for each of the states is hundreds of civilian jobs, construction dollars and the ongoing economic lift that comes from military operations in your community. All the while, military officials working at the command would just like to establish their headquarters somewhere permanently. As tension escalates with China and the war in Ukraine continues, it is important to have operations stable and ready for whatever the future holds. For Rethinking Heroes, I'm Rose Thayer. Back to you, Carrie. And special thanks to military reporter Rose Thayer for assembling your Rethinking Heroes flash briefing from Los Angeles and beyond. I'm Carrie Harrison. Don't forget to subscribe and like Rethinking Heroes wherever you get your podcasts and follow us all across social media simply by looking for rethinking heroes rethinking heroes with carrie harrison rethinking heroes.com carrie harrison here with an exciting radio gift benefit just for you rethinking heroes has found one more way to help not only vets but people like you this is radio giving back for all the time you've spent with us rethinking heroes has found an angel partner who's created a downloadable fee-free discount pharmacy card to give you up to 90% off many of your meds. It's pegged to government listed prices, so my $250 Lipitor is only 13 bucks. Unlike GoodRx, this bypasses the middleman. It's our Rethinking Heroes Capital Rx thank you card with no fees ever, no credit cards, no expiration dates, no cookies, no tracking. Perfect for the modern listener like you dealing with a busted medical system. So accept this thank you gift and download your fee-free Free cards now at RethinkingHeroes.com. RethinkingHeroes.com. That's RethinkingHeroes.com. By the way, if this isn't a good reason to love this radio station, show me a better one.